Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand MOS capacitance. We know that in order to study the transient response or AC response of my MOS device, I need to find the value of its capacitance. And that is what we are going to do in this clip. MOS capacitance ideally are very difficult to be predicted because it requires the geometry of my device or layout geometry which is a part of physical design and the manufacturing process. Ideally they are very complicated but here we will use a simple approximation and find this values of this capacitance. Now we know that there are going to be two types of capacitance which are going to be present. One is going to be the MOS capacitance or the parasitic capacitance or the device capacitance. So MOS capacitance also known as parasitic. Parasitic means unwanted. Parasitic device capacitance related to the device this capacitance are present. And the other one is interconnect capacitance. Interconnect capacitance is nothing but the wired capacitance between two different MOSFETs when the connections are made. Again, in this clip, we are not going to focus on interconnect capacitance. We are going to focus on device parasitic capacitance. In order to understand the parasitic capacitance, we need to understand the top view of my NMOS or PMOS. This is the cross-sectional view of my NMOS where this is nothing but my P substrate, diffusion, N-type, source and drain oxide gate and here the input connections would be made this V plus are nothing but channel stop implant in case you have two NMOSs on the same substrate what will happen is between that NMOS diffusion and this NMOS there can be a very strong possibility that the channel will be formed in order to avoid that because it's an unwanted channel we have a channel stop implant at both the places this is nothing but the top view of my NMOS where this is nothing but my gate, diffusion, diffusion. There's the width of my diffusion, there's the length of my diffusion, y. And if you see, there's some portion of source which overlaps with the gate and some portion of drain also which overlaps with the gate, which I have mentioned with length of LD and they are both going to be same because of the symmetricity. So what can I predict from here as my total length of my channel? So L is going to be LM minus twice LD because of the overlap LD correct with that now we are all set to start understanding that parasitic capacitance in a MOSFET are also classified into two types one is oxide capacitance another one is junction capacitance in this clip we are going to study oxide capacitance in details and in the next clip we will be studying junction capacitance now what are the different capacitance which we are going to be concerned with is nothing but correct we are more concerned with CGS, CGD and CGB. B is bulk or body. Now we know that these capacitance are the capacitance which are formed due to the interaction between the gate voltage and the channel charge. In simple words, when there is a positive gate voltage or some voltage applied at its gate, a channel would be formed between the source and the drain. So I'm more concerned with the gate terminal when its channel is formed or when the channel is not formed. So gate terminal with body, gate terminal with drain and gate terminal with source. And technically this is, this CGS or CGD is nothing but, CGS is actually the gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and the source terminal. And CGD is nothing but gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and the drain terminal. I repeat, CGS, is gate to source correct and CGT is gate to drain so this is nothing but gate to channel capacitance this is also gate to channel capacitance seen between gate and source terminal this is seen between gate and drain terminal remember that it's basically a gate to channel capacitance seen between gate to source and gate to drain so here we are all set to start 